Good morning, Moray Rabotai, Bruchim Habayim. We are continuing on Masechet Bakot and we are on Dafyutet. Amud Aleph, six lines down from the top of the Amud. Amar Rav Sheshet. Today's Amud is being learned. The Schut Rufuas Shelema. For Rachel Simcha Bad Nahid, that should have a full recovery. Rufuas Shelema, Bezat Hashem, Amen. Also has been dedicated. As a schut for Rufa Asher Mav, Gabriel Haim Ben Eliza and Eliza Bat Linda should have lead up that Bezat Hashem should have Rufa Asher Amen. This week's um, learnings of the community has been dedicated graciously by the Dayan family, Kohen family, and Shei families. Should be an ultimate schut for all their families, Bezat Hashem. Amen. Okay, we are. Going back to the discussion that we had in the beginning of yesterday's Amud, Amar Rav Sheshet Bikuri Ma'racha Ma'akevet Bahen, Keriya En Ma'akevet Bahen. This is the counterpart of our Mishnah Daf Yud Zayin, that the Gemara said there, the Mishnah and the Gemara, the Shita of Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Akiva, that by Bikurim, reading the parasha that the farmer would come to the Beit HaMikdash and say, Arami Obed Aviv Ayeret Nisraima. That is an essential part. If you eat it before, if the Kohen even, who was supposed to eat it, if he eats it prematurely before the parasha of Vidui Maaser, he's going to be get la- getting lashes. Then we had the opposite Shita of Chachamim, Rabbi Lazar. Over here, the Gemara says in the name of Rav Sheshat, Rav Sheshet, Putting it in front of the Mizbeach in Azara, that is what's Ma'akiv. Once you already put it there, the Kohen takes it away from the farmer, puts it there. That moment already you have done your basic obligation, the minimum requirement, and the Kriya is now Ma'akiv. Says the Gemara, Come on, who is this Rav Sheshet? Who is this Shita like? Ki haitana de Tanya. This is a Brita that we learned in the name of Rabbi Yossi. Now we have this Brita mentioned in Zvachim already, and Daf Samech Amud Alef Tigmara. There says Rabbi Yossi said Shlosha Dvarim Mishum Shlosha Zkenim. Rabbi Yossi codified three alachot in the name of three Tanaim, earlier Tanaim than himself. The Marada really doesn't mention all three. We're just going to also see the third one in the name of Rabbi Ishmael. But in Sifri, if you take a look at Sifri, the three halachot is one in the name of Rabbi Akiva, one in the name of Ben, ben Azai, or Ben Zuma, really. It's called Machlok, it really seems like Ben Zuma, maybe Ben Azai. And the third one is in the name of Rabbi Ishmael, right? So th- there, the Gemara says Rabbi Ishmael said a halacha that he had questioned about, he had doubts about, and this is the, the limud that Rabbi Ishmael said. Rabbi Ishmael Omer, again, this is the third one of the halachot that Rabbi Yossi codified. Today, 2024, you want to bring Maaser Shani to Yerushalayim. Can you do that? It's nothing of like, it's your produce. You're going to be eating it. Don't have to bring it to Beit HaMikdash. Can I bring Maaser Shani and eat it in Yerushalayim today? After the Churban Habayit, or maybe I can't. So says the Gemara. Vedinu. Now this is, by the way, um, Rabbi Ishmael li- lived through the time of Churban Habayit. So did Rabbi Ishmael. So did Rabbi Akiva. Uh, they were the, the generation right after the Churban. Rabbi Akiva was. Um, these two, which we recently learned about, they were in Khurban Betar. In other words, Rabbi Akiva, for instance, was uh, one of the biggest advocates of the revolt of Bar Kokhva, 
which was immediately after the Khurban. This was in the time of Khurban Abayit. But Betar still was a tremendous city, and Bar Kokhba was the king of the remnants of the Jews in Eretz Yisrael. And um, um, Rabbi Akiva felt that he was Mashiach to the degree that he would run in front of him, carry his, his vessels for him. It was a, and people were very hopeful because he, he was a tremendous person. He had a tremendous, tremendous army. And uh, it was the stronghold of the Jewish community after the Khurban. And it wasn't as bad because they had not banned um, learning Torah. All those things happened after the destruction of Bar Kokhva and Betar. They really came with a heavy hand because it was the second revolt in 60 years. That's the, the Romans were very, very unhappy and disappointed with the Jewish community. So <clears throat> they lived in a period of, let's call it, uh, prosperity under the Roman government after the Khurban, right? That's the, the reality. So Rabbi Shmuel says, can we bring Maser Shani to Yerushalayim? The Beit HaMikdash is not there, it got burnt. But can we bring it and eat it there? So says the Gemara, Vedinu, the halachat in, in the logical discourse, the halacha should come out that you shouldn't be allowed to. Why? Because the Pasuk compares Maser Shani with things that you need the Beit HaMikdash for. So it seems from the comparison of the Pasuk that you shouldn't be. It's Mamasinu, we call it. I find a precedent for other things that are compared with this, and if the, the, the precedent tells me that you, you can't do it by this, that Mamatsinu, or you can't do it by this either. So Dinu, it should be logically provable that you shouldn't be able to bring Master Shani and eat it in Yerushalayim. It's not a thing. Why? Because Bechor Ta'un Hava'at Makom, when you have a Bechor, you have to bring it to Yerushalayim also, right? Havad Makom, you have to bring it to the Makom of the Beit HaMikdash of, of, of Yerushalayim. Umasar Shani Ta'un Havad Makom. Maser Shani also needs to be brought to Yerushalayim. You can't just eat, decide, I'm eating my Maser Shani in Haifa, in wherever I am. It has to be Yerushalayim. Both of these are Havad Makom, things that need to be brought to Yerushalayim. So it's a mamatzinu. Just like, says the Gemara, Bechor, Eno Ela Bifne Habayi, just like Bechor, you could only bring when you have the Beta Mikdash. Logically, we should say that Master Shani should be the same way. Af Master Shani, Eno Ela Bifne Habayi. That should be the logic. Mara says, no, that's not the logic. Because Bechor is a serious offering. How do you do Bechor? You have to actually bring it to Beit HaMikdash. Unlike Maser Shani, that you bring it to Yerushalayim, Bechor, you have to bring it and shecht it and put the blood on, on, on the Mizbeach. You don't have any of that. You don't have the Beit HaMikdash, you don't have the Mizbeach. So of course Bechor you can't bring, but who says Maser Shani you can't bring? Says the Gemara. Ma'le Bechor shken ta'un matan damim ve'emorin. It needs, it needs a whole process with the body parts with the blood. Maras says, no problem. I could take care of that with an example of Bikurim. What's that? That means by Bikurim, I don't need Shita. It's like Bikurim. You just bring it there, you put it there, and you're good to go. Now, this is where we're going to go, come back to, Rabotai. I'm just giving you the the heads up, we're going to go back to this sentence of the Gemara in five lines, because this is what the Gemara wants. For bringing this whole discussion is for this one line. Mara says, Bikurim should be the proof, because what's Bikurim? You could bring Bikurim to Beit HaMikdash, and that's it. And yet, do we have the mitzvah Bikurim after Churban Abayit? No. So just like by Bikurim you don't have it after Churban Abayit, so should be the Alakha by Master Sheni. Both of them are things that need to be brought to Yerushalayim. They need Hava'at Makom. And I should be able to learn if one of them is not applicable today, 
The other one also should not be applicable today. That's the Gemara's second attempt. Now, look at what the Gemara says. And this, this following line is the line that we want. So, Bikurim Yochichu says the Gemara, let's read what we said inside. Male Bikurim Shen Teunin Hanacha. He says, no, that's not a good idea. Because even Bikurim, it's much more than Master Sheni. What do you do, Master Sheni? You rent an Airbnb in, in Yerushalayim, anywhere in Yerushalayim. You sit there, as long as he has a nice balcony and a big table, you sit and you eat your Master Sheni. You don't have to eat it in Beit HaMikdash. By Bikurim, you have to bring it in the Beit HaMikdash, put it in front of the Mizbeach in Azara. Hmm? That's a problem. You have a chumrah, you have a stringency in Bikurim that you don't find by Master Sheni. So it says the Gemara, Bikurim yochihu, ma Bikurim shechentunin halacha. Now pay attention. What does the Gemara say? When you want to prove the stringency of Bikurim, what do you say? Shechentunin halacha. The Gemara says you need halacha. You need to put it in front of the Azara. What does that say to you? What does that indicate? It indicates as if that Kriya, the reading of the text of Vidui Maser, is not, the, it's not even a thing. If that also was a thing, just like you said by, um, by Bechor that you need Zrikat Tamim, you need uh, you know, all the Chumrot that the Bechor has, the Gemara says. But by this, the Gemara doesn't say, Sheken Ta'un Hanacha Vekriya. The Gemara doesn't say you need to put it in, in Azara, and you also need to read the Kriyat Parashat Maser, we do Maser. So from here, the Gemara is going to, in five lines, can, can come back to this and say, oh, you see, only Hanacha is Makev by Bikurim, but Kriya is not Makev. Kriya is not a thing, because the Gemara doesn't mention it as one of the stringencies of Bikurim. So that, that is going to be the discussion of the Gemara, but for now we go on to just finish what Rabbi Ishmael said. Remember, we are still in the world of Rabbi Ishmael. Rabbi Ishmael is still talking, right? Rabbi Ishmael uh, cleared the Shaila, he asked the question, says, can we bring um, Masir Sheni today to Yerushalayim? He says, well, we shouldn't be able to because by Bechor you're not. The says, now Bechor is different. You need Shechita, you need Katamim, you need all that. Emurim. He says, oh, Bikurim should be the proof. Bikurim also you need to bring, but it doesn't apply after Beit HaMikdash. Then he says, oh no, you can't that either. We can scratch that because that also needs Hanacha. You have to put it still in the Azara, right? So he also has a stringency that Master Shani doesn't have. Talmud Lomar says the Gemara. The Gemara is, is not clear over here. It's, the, the language is a little cryptic, so I'll... I'll Put, put the explanation in. Here the Gemara is dropping, Rabbi Ishmael is dropping one way of learning and is you know, resorting to a different way. Until now, Rabbi Ishmael was saying, let's find an example of comparison. We call that Mamatzinu. Let's go find if we find something that's similar and apply the halacha from there to here. Oh, I found another place that you need bringing to Yerushalayim. I said, no, that's different, it has a stringency. Oh, I found another one that's less stringent that needs to be brought to Yerushalayim, right? AKA Bikurim. I said, no, that also has a stringency, it has to be put in the Azara. So we're stuck. So he's dropping the Mamatsinu, and now it says, let's learn from one of the, the 13 principles of the darshaning of the Torah, Hekesh. Right? They are, when, when something is compared in the Pasuk itself with something else, then there's no kashas. The Pasuk compares them. Well, you gotta, well, who, are, who are we to say no? Right? So it says, the Gemara Rabbi Ishmael said, Ah, Talmud Lomar, ve'achalta lifnei Hashem elokecham. Right? This is the long Pasuk that we had in Dvarim Perk Yudalet. I'm going to just read the whole Pasuk from the side to go on it um, ourselves when the Gemara it. The Pasuk says, You should eat in front of Hashem, which means in Yerushalayim. Ba'makom asher yifchar, l'shaken shemo sham. Ma'asar degancha. What's that? Ma'asar sheni. You should bring ma'asar sheni and eat it in front of Hashem, which means in Yerushalayim. 
בדל איסס תירושך איסריך ובכורות בקרך ושונאך. The same sentence puts מעשר שני together with בכור. So says רבי ישמעאל I'm not doing it. The pasuk is comparing them together. So just like by bechor, makish maaser le bechor, it's comparing. The pasuk is comparing maaser sheni and bechor. Therefore, ma bechor eno el alif neabayit. Just like bechor only is applicable when bet hamikdash is standing and operational, maaser sheni is the same way. So then what I says, going back to that, and that's, that's the Rabbi Ishmael. Until now was the words of Rabbi Ishmael that we codified in the name of Rabbi Yossi, which is really a Gemara in um, Zvachim, in Daf Samech, which is really sourced in Sifri, which we mentioned. Atkan, co- end quote. Now the Gemara goes back, as we already discussed. Gemara says, wait a second. When he was going through his Mamatsinu, and he wanted to say the stringency of um, Bikurim, what did he say? Bikurim is stringent because he needs Hanakha. He didn't say Kriya. If he really needs reading of the parasha of Vidui Maaser of Arami over Davi, let him say that too. He didn't. It means it's not necessary. That's the Gemara did this whole 15 lines to say, you see from this Gemara, from with words, the, the precise words of Rabbi Yossi, that you don't need Kriya by Bikurim. It's not Me'akiv. No, you need it. Now that's, you don't need it. But it's not Me'akiv. It's not an essential part of the process. Fine. The Gemara says, let, let's read this actually. Ve'im ita lifroch male Bikurim shkantewulin Kriya v'anacha. It should have said, if, if really Kriya is so important, that's Ma'akev, it should have said, Bikurim needs Kriya and Hanacha. It doesn't. Amar Rav Ashi, Rav Ashi says, Nehi de ikuva leka, mitzvah mi leka. He says, what? It's correct that it's not um, le ikuva. It's correct that it may not be as essential as putting it in the Azara, that would be ma'akev, that would stop you from being able to eat it. But the ma'asev, it's a mitzvah to read. So still is a stringency. So why didn't, Rabbi Ashi says, have you asked yourself a question? Why wouldn't Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Ishmael really, say the Kriya anyways? Even if, let me, let me agree with you for just the discussion's sake. Let's imagine you're correct. That really Kriya is not Ma'akev, it's not essential, but it's needed. You're going to do it. It's still a stringency as a mitzvah. So why, why indeed did Rabbi Ishmael not mention it? You need a reason. He should have mentioned it even if it's not Ma'akev, but he doesn't. You know why the reason is that Rabbi Ishmael doesn't mention it? You, thought, you think Rabbi Ishmael was precise, it's much more precise than you think. He bedavka didn't mention it. He specifically omitted it. You know why? Because Kriya is not always there. We already discussed the timeline of after Sukkot, you never do Kriya, right? You could bring Bikurim and not have Kriya because it's after Sukkot until Hanukkah. That we already discussed, right? It's a Mishnah. But the Gemara doesn't even say that. The Gemara says, even before Sukkot, which is time of Kriya, there are many people who don't do the Kriya, the reading of the parasha of, Mas, uh, of, of Vidui Ma'asir, of Bikurim. Who, for instance, the Gemara says as an example, uh, Gertzedek doesn't read it because it's a technicality. The technicality says, Lavotenu, uh, you gave this to Avotenu, and he can't say that's Therefore, he's, he's not obligated to say it. So therefore, when Rabbi Ishmael wants to say something, he wants to say something that is solid. He wants to say something that's ac- across the board by everyone. That's why he omitted the reading of Parashat Vidui Maaser, not because it's not essential. So once you say that, you have no proof that the reading of the parasha is not Ma'akiv. It could very well be Ma'akiv, but he doesn't say it 
because it's not applicable across the board to everybody. There are many people who are not going to be reading it for whatever reason they have. Says the Gemara. Velema mitzvah velifroch ela amar Rav Ashi. Rav Ashi says kevan de ika be bikure hager a ger tzedek would not be reading the baile memar asher nishba Hashem leavotenu in the text of parashat vitu maaser. It has this sentence of asher nishba Hashem leavotenu velo matzi amar you can't say that lo psikale. It's not across the board applicable, and therefore Rabbi Ishmael omitted it. That's all it is. There's no other reason why Rabbi Ishmael doesn't say it, because even if you would be correct, that's not Ma'akev, he still should say it, because it's a mitzvah. That, that's according to everybody, it's a mitzvah to say it. So why indeed doesn't he say it as a stringency? Because he doesn't want to say it, because it's not applicable to everyone. That's all. And once he say that, it could very well be that Kriya is Ma'akev. Is very essential, and still he doesn't say it because it's not applicable to everyone across the board. So he just knocked out the entire 20 lines. He said, "Very nice try, Rabbi Ishmael. We learned a lot of new halachot. Amazing. We got some zvachim raid over here. Awesome, but not not a proof, right?" And then now the Gemara says, "Wait a second. Back to this discussion of Rabbi Ishmael. So remember what happened over here." Rabbi Ishmael is thinking to himself, he says, what's the halacha nowadays before the, the, um, the Bar Kokhva's destruction? So I want to bring Master Shani to Yerushalayim. Can I? May I? Yes? No? And he goes through this logical discourse. He says, well, let's learn Bemamatzinu from what? Bechor. Bechor needs to be brought to Yerushalayim. He said, no, no, you can't do that stringency of emurim, all those, forget about it. Then he says, well, I find another thing that I could bring to you, I should bring to Yerushalayim, and that's Bikurim, right? And then he says, no, Bikurim also is not good because you need to put it in front of the Mizbeach in Azara. So that also has a strange thing. The Mara says, the Litardina, why don't you just combine both of them, right? Because you remember what happened with Rabbi Ishmael after that second question, he just dropped it. He said, forget about it. We can't learn it from Mamatzinu. Let's learn it from Hekesh, because the Pasuk compares them, right? That's how he ended up learning. The Mara says, why do you have to go to Hekesh? The Mamatzinu is pretty good. Just combine those two powers. Each one doesn't have the stringency of the other one, and that should be good, because <coughs> you asked, the last step was, you can't learn from Bikurim because it needs to be put in front of the Mizbeach. Guess what doesn't need to be put in front of the Mizbeach? Bechor. So you could say, well, the putting in front of the Mizbeach is not a, it's not the stringency that does it because Bechor doesn't need to be put in front of, in the Azara, and yet you can't eat it outside of the time of the Bet HaMikdash. And from the combined Sata Shave, we call it, right? From the Sata Shave, from the common denominator, the common denominator is they both need to be brought to Yerushalayim, and they both are not applicable when the Beit is destroyed. Let Rabbi Ishmael learn a Mamatzinu from the common denominator. What's wrong with that? Their common denominator is amazing because the only thing that they have in common is both have to be brought to Yerushalayim and eaten in Yerushalayim. And they're not applicable to the time the Beit HaMikdash is not standing. So the stringency of Bechor doesn't apply to Bikurim, and the stringency of Bikurim doesn't apply to Bechor. It's awesome. Why didn't Rabbi Ishmael do that? Unless you find a problem with the Sada Shaveh. Unless you find a problem also with the common denominator, which is exactly what the Gemara is going to do. So let's read it. Says the Gemara, Veleh Tardina Vetaiti Bemasat, let it you know, revert back to Bikurim that doesn't have the stringency of Bechor, right? And learn it from the Sad Ashave, the common denominator, says the Gemara. No, that's the reason is Mishum the Ikale Mifrach. We could ask a question even on the Sad Ashave on the common denominator. What is the problem on the Sad Ashave and the common denominator? 
במפרע, מה לעשות עכשיו יש בהם שכן, יש בהם צד מזבח? צד השווה is both of them have a connection to מזבח. In other words, ביקורים has a connection to מזבח because you have to put it וינחתו לפני מזבח השם אלוקיך, right? He has to put it in front of the מזבח. That's what the pasuk says about ביקורים. And בכור of course has a צד מזבח because the blood has to be put on the מזבח. So you need מזבח for ביקורים and for בכור. And guess what you don't have if you don't have Bet HaMikdash? Mizbeach. You don't have the Mizbeach when you don't have the Bet HaMikdash. Therefore, you can't compare, even the Sada Shaveh is not comparable, even the common denominator is not comparable with Maser Sheni. Now, the Gemara is going to, to discuss something uh, pretty amazing, which is, what does Rabbi Ishmael think when he asks this question? We have the Bet HaMikdash destroyed. And now Yerushalayim is still Yerushalayim. Hundreds of thousands and millions of Jews still living there in, in Eretz Israel, right? What is the status of Yerushalayim? This is going to be a discussion that comes up dozens of times in, in Shas. In almost every Masechta, you'll have a dealing with this. Um, Kedusha, the, the Kedusha of Yerushalayim. What's the status of the Kedusha of Yerushalayim nowadays? This actually has a lot of halachic ramifications. Can you go to the place of Harabayit? Can you go beyond the, the wall? Can all those things have a lot to do with this question. What is the status of Yerushalayim's Kedusha nowadays in the time of the Churban, right? Kedusha Rishona Kidesha Lishata, when they sanctified Yerushalayim in the beginning, was it only for its time until the Beit HaMikdash was destroyed? Or, that it was an eternal sanctification of the place, and even in the time duration of the Hurban, still it maintains its Kedusha. And that actually is going to be, Gemara is going to say, what does the Bishmael hold? Because if he holds like this, he shouldn't have any questions. And if he holds like that, he shouldn't have any questions. So, we're going to start scratching our heads. What exactly does Rabbi Ishmael hold? Which is going to be, again, a fascinating um, tangent that we're going to take in the Gemara in, in all those amazing halachot applicable to today as well. There's not a shame for the days to come.